Your Excellency President of Interpol, Excellency Secretary General of Interpol, distinguished guests, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to all of you. And for friends from, from around the world, warm welcome to Singapore, literally. It's a pleasure to join all of you this evening. I'm delighted that this second edition of Interpol World, held in Singapore, continues to draw strong participation from law enforcement, government bodies, academia, security professionals, and solution providers. We have here with us today influential thought leaders and practitioners from both the public and private sectors converging to discuss safety and security issues. This comes at a time when the global community grapples with the rapidly changing and increasingly complex security landscape that presents unprecedented challenges. Interpol World reflects Interpol's efforts to build a safer world through enhanced international cooperation and innovation on policing and security matters. Singapore strongly supports such efforts by Interpol to strengthen global safety and security. Our support for Interpol goes beyond Interpol World. Singapore hosts the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation, or IGCI. Our increasingly global world, connected by technology and powered by cross-border networks, offers new economic and other opportunities, but at the same time presents new security risks. We therefore support Interpol's global strategy to combat current and emergent security risks such as cybercrime, terrorism, and transnational crime. We recognize the importance of capacity building and innovation to enable countries to fight transnational crime and security threats collectively and effectively. Indeed, technology and innovation are key enablers for law enforcement and security services too in this digital age. Policing of the future will increasingly rely on technology and data analytics to fight terrorism, cybercrime, and organized and emergent crime. It is critical that both the public and private sectors collaborate closely to understand the current and emerging risks in the operating environment and examine how technology and innovation can be harnessed to their fullest potential to address and mitigate these risks. Just as law enforcement and security services are looking at different ways to integrate technology and innovation in their operating <coughs> models, so too are terrorists and criminal organizations, particularly in the realm of cyberspace. Cyberspace offers the twin benefits of anonymity and mobility to terrorists and criminals alike. A criminal underground economy hidden in the internet has been operating for many years now. Terrorists and criminal networks can now operate globally, coordinating complex operations across territorial borders in real time. The recent WannaCry ransomware outbreak is a stark reminder of this reality. The ransomware reportedly affected computer networks in more than 150 countries affecting more than 200,000 people. Just last week, media reported a new, not Petia, ransomware outbreak. The outbreak wreaked havoc around the globe, crippling businesses in many sectors, including banking, energy, and transport. It is therefore timely that the dark net received the attention and focus of the Interpol World Congress earlier today. As a highly cyber-connected city, Singapore is enhancing its capabilities and resilience to deal with the cyber threat. So allow me this evening to take a bit of time to share some of our key initiatives against cybercrime in the spirit of sharing. In July last year, we launched our National Cybercrime Action Plan, or NCAP for short. There are four key priorities in this action plan. First, educating and empowering the public to say, stay safe in cyberspace. Second, enhancing the government's capacity and capability to combat cybercrime. Third, strengthening legislation and the criminal justice framework. And fourth, 
setting up partnerships and international engagements. I will elaborate starting with the first priority, public education and empowerment. And as part of its public cyber outreach and resilience program, the Singapore Police Force actively reaches out to members of the public to encourage safe online behaviour and to reduce opportunities for cyber criminals. These are customised to better target more vulnerable groups in society, such as our young and our elderly. The police has also partnered Europol in its No More Ransom project. The project helps victims of ransomware retrieve their encrypted data without paying any ransom and it educates the public on how they can better protect themselves. Since December last year, more than 10,000 ransomware victims worldwide have benefited using tools available on the project's online portal to decrypt their affected devices. The police has been proactively promoting the project's online portal to our public and to expand the reach of the project we are currently in the process of translating the contents of the online portal into our other official languages. So that's education and outreach. I now move on to the second pillar of our action plan, which is enhancing government's capacity and capability to combat cybercrime. Here, we seek to enhance our cybercrime investigation as well as forensic capability. In 2015, the police established a cybercrime command within our criminal investigation department. Its role is to develop specialist expertise in cyber investigation, digital forensics, and cybercrime policy, and also to improve police readiness for and response to emerging cyber threats. Full-time cybercrime response teams have been set up since December 2015 in all six of our frontline police divisions across our city to enhance our cybercrime response capabilities. Our third national priority is to strengthen laws and our criminal justice framework to tackle cyber threats. The Computer Misuse and Cybersecurity Act is Singapore's primary legislation to deal with cybercrime. We amended it in June this year to address the increasing scale and transnational nature of cybercrime, as well as the evolving tactics of cyber criminals. So, for instance, it is now an offence under our law to deal in hacked personal information, as well as hacking tools with criminal intent. The amendments also give Singapore extraterritorial jurisdiction over offences where the act causes or creates a significant risk of serious harm in Singapore. Move on to the final pillar of our action plan, which is building partnerships and international engagements. Building strong partnerships with key public and private sector actors is this important fourth key thrust. As Interpol's global hub for combating cybercrime, the IGCI is a natural partner for us. Collaborating with Interpol and other partner countries, Singapore has rolled out a slew of capacity-building programs for the ASEAN region in the last few years, as we are the ASEAN lead shepherd for cybercrime. Some contemporary examples include the ASEAN Cyber Capacity Development Project, funded by Japan and implemented by Interpol, that will run from 2016 to 2018. The Interpol Southeast Asian Workshop on cybercrime under the auspices of the Singapore-US third-party training program in 2015 and 2016, and the ASEAN Plus 3 cybercrime workshop in July last year involving China, Japan, and South Korea. We are privileged to have Interpol's presence in Singapore, as well as strong support from key international partners and ASEAN member states. We hope to build an even more collaborative environment to exchange best practices, and to forge even closer operational links. This has borne fruit. For example, in February this year, Interpol led an operation targeting cybercrime across ASEAN member states. The operation conducted out of IGCI brought together investigators from seven ASEAN member states to share information on specific cybercrime situations in their respective countries. It identified nearly 9,000 compromised servers and hundreds of malware-infected websites, and investigations are still ongoing. 
The private sector too is an important partner. Its investments in R&D, for example, provides a significant competitive advantage against cybercrime. Now, recognizing the value of the private sector, the Singapore Police Cybercrime Command rolled out the Alliance of Public-Private Cybercrime Stakeholders Initiative in February this year. This alliance serves as a dedicated platform for law enforcement and the private sector to meet to enhance cybercrime awareness in the private sector, to prevent, deter and detect cybercrime, and to forge active collaboration. There are currently 40 partners in the alliance comprising global IT companies, e-commerce platforms, telecommunications service providers, financial institutions, as well as remittance agencies. Through this alliance, the stronger relations forged with the banks allow the police to quickly freeze bank accounts involved in the recent spate of impersonation scams. This prevented overseas <coughs> fund transfers and loss for the victims. The Singapore Ministry of Home Affairs has also recently established a special interest group for cybercrime and investigation in collaboration with the Singapore Cybersecurity Consortium. Through this initiative, we can bring real-world cybercrime and investigation challenges to the academia and our industry, and leverage on their talent and innovation to deal with cybercrime. The fight against cybercrime cannot be fought by governments alone. A collaborative ecosystem involving the community, industry, academia, and governments is crucial to tackling this formidable threat. I hope that all of us will leverage on Interpol World 2017 to forge deeper public-private sector understanding and collaboration and contribute towards Interpol's vision to build a safer world. Once again, welcome to Singapore, and I wish all of you an enjoyable networking evening and a productive and successful conference. Thank you. Thank you, Minister.